But at the end of the day, a youngster graduating from one of our high schools has to become occupationally literate as much as he or she is academically literate. It's insufficient to think that they simply have math skills, reading skills, writing skills, comprehension skills, science skills, but in effect don't know how to have a conversation with someone who does not look like them or does not speak their language. Moreover, they have not even acquired the understanding of other nations, how they trade, how they think about commerce, what they do with their family structure, or what language and how many languages they speak. All of that work is, I think, subsumed in the work of secondary school reform. I applaud the commissioner, the chancellor, the governor, and anybody else who's actually on board with asking the hard question about a new level of literacy far beyond our academic preparation. And that level of literacy is, are you literate in terms of your occupational pre preparedness? Do you know how to work? Do you know how to exchange yourself in the world of work? Our middle schools and high schools, in my judgment, are hungry for the technological and academic advances and the internships and the opportunities to apply their learning in an environment in which they now have to say what and show what they can do, not just necessarily repeat it out on a test paper, bubble it in on a bubbler. It's insufficient. Countries like China and India, frankly, are eating our lunch, not necessarily just because they speak multi-languages by the time they're in third or fourth grade, but because they connect their learning to an applied learning base way outside of their own schooling experience. It's extraordinarily rich these times that we might be able to actually redo our middle schools and our high schools in the image of giving youngsters those kind of opportunities and experiences. But I want to go one step further. The toward what end for me is not necessarily even stopping at occupational literacy. There is a need for us to really concentrate on what does it mean to have a sense of civic literacy. I, I don't know about you, but I got a thrill out of watching this young, young student this morning or this afternoon uh, sing the Star Spangled Banner. And I listen to young children do this all the time. And I watch adults at baseball and football games and sporting events. And the nation has actually gotten sort of illiterate about its own history. It's as though, my goodness, if, if, if something were to happen globally, even if we read about it, we might not necessarily even know its impact in our own local community. And the, to a large extent, this notion of civic literacy is as much a part of the learning of an adult and the movement into adulthood as almost any other preparation or preparedness that we have to give our young people. I want to give you a sense of this through a quick story, and I'll be very, very quick about this. There was a, a, a young kid who um, I saw one day um, in a restroom in, the, uh, in my office in New York, who said to me, um, Chancellor, I'm going downstairs to, uh, to get a, uh, uh, apply for a job on the sixth floor. I said, oh, Jason, tell me what the job is. He said, oh, it's, it's, it's in human resources, and I'm an intern now, but maybe during the summer I'll be able to do this as a full-time full job, and I can really maybe even turn it into... Uh, something I would go to school and on and on and on and I said to him well I want to wish you good luck go downstairs do the best you can break a leg and all that and as he left the men's room he began to go downstairs and immediately take his shirt out of his pants sag his pants and go downstairs to this interview whereupon I said to him Jason where are you going? He said, I'm going to the interview. 
And he looked at me with the same sense of chagrin that I, look, that, he looked, that I looked at him with. He could not believe that I was taken aback, and he couldn't see that there was anything wrong in what he was doing. I said, Jason, I said, let me ask you a quick question. I said, when you go down, give me a sense of what you're, I mean, let's assume you went like this. You're not gonna, son, but let, let me just assume that you could go down to this interview like this. Let me just hear, how are you gonna start off this conversation? Now it was clear to me he didn't have the dress thing down right. But now I wanted to just hear, what's his perception of what this event is? He said, well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go down and uh, I'm gonna sit down and you know, let him start asking questions. I said, well, Jason, do you, do, do you go ahead, do you, do you introduce yourself? Do you tell people your name? Do you tell them what grade, what school? Do you, do you shake someone's hand? I mean, you know, he said, well, I'm not shaking anybody's hand if they don't shake mine. And it occurred to me that this young boy as an 11th grader was about to go through one more year of high school and he hadn't learned the rules of the road of how you actually engage not just in the world of work, but how do you exchange your personhood in the context of an interview? I was saddened by that. I'm still saddened by it. Because it's not a question of his acumen. It's not a question of whether he's smart enough. We misjudge whether or not students like that are smart or dumb. There's not even a question in my mind as to what they intellectually have. Matter of fact, I don't even think we even really ever quite assess it. These are, these are social geniuses, but they have absolutely no skill at knowing how to navigate the world around them.